we have the controversial thing you have to deal with that, so now we're going to deal with it right now. So, um, <laughs> I saw, I tell you. At what point it became, or he became aware that this gentleman was about to come to Jamaica. Was he traveling here on the invitation of the organizers of the million dollar, million, <laughs> well, it's really million dollars, it's four million dollars. No! <laughs> At one point, he became, oh, he became aware that this gentleman was about to come to Jamaica. Was he traveling here on the invitation of the organizers of the million dollar, million, well, it's really million dollars, four million dollars. <laughs> <laughs> all right, the arrogance of politicians. All the people in their character, you know. Mm -hmm. You might try to bring it off now. All the people. <laughs> anyway, <clears throat> that is a good laugh. We're going to where we are going to deal with this now. Um, Abu Baka. Abu Baka has been creating waves in Jamaica. I don't know if him know that. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Hello. Ah, yes, good afternoon. Good afternoon, my dear brother. Mo, uh, Muta Baruka. Muta, how are you? I am, I am, I am blessed. I am blessed, and I hope you are blessed too. Yeah. Yes. Can you speak a little loud, please? Yes, I am. I am saying I am blessed, and I hope you are blessed too. Yes, I am. I am. How are you? I am okay. Good. Oh, you know that you are right. creating a lot of problems in Jamaica, and you are not here. Yes. You know well, that you know that you have been creating a revolution in Jamaica, and you are not here. It's almost like you are. Well, you, you have created a coup in Jamaica and you are not here. <laughs> well, I don't, I don't know that. But I, I do not know you, but I know of you. Okay. Because I, I saw an interview with the Minister Farrakhan, and you made me laugh when you said Farrakhan skied. You remember that interview? Farrakhan speed. Yes. Oh, I don't remember. I've done so much interview with him. Well, that that is one of your better interviews. <laughs> now, before we begin, uh, we begin, brother Muta. Yes. I, I want to make sure we're on the same page. Yes. Yes. Now, if we are to agree on distance, we first have to agree that twelve inches is a foot. Mm -hmm. When we agree that 12 inches is a foot, then we could agree on distance. Okay. So let me see if I can get your agreement. I am your brother that came on the slave ship with you. Yes. You are not an infidel. No. You are my brother yes. that came on the ship mm -hmm. with me. Mm -hmm. You saved my life and I saved your life. You were not concerned whether I was from Jamaica or from Trinidad. Mm. You know that when the wave bash you on that side, you had to block me or else the shark would eat me. Yeah. And I know when the wave bash me on the next side, I had to save you or else the shark would eat me. Mm -hmm. So it was survival and we survived. Yes. You survived, and I, survived. And I have survived. Yes. Who didn't survive? The shark ate them and then the bottom of the sea. Yes. So if we agree on that, that you are not an infidel, you are my brother who yes. came on the slave ship with me, you saved my life and I saved your life, yes. and it had nothing to do whether you were from Jamaica, uh, what tribe you were from, it had to do that you and I are were African on the same ship yes. and we needed to survive. Yes, I and agree with you. right back in that position position now where Africans need to survive. I agree with you, sir. I agree with you. Okay. Okay. So in agreeing with you now and the infidel thing, I, I want to recognize that you are a Muslim, but you are saying that you don't accept the idea of infidels. 
Yes, I, I, I do not subscribe to the fact that you are an infidel. You reject, you, you reject that term. That came that, with me on the ship. So you are rejecting that term that most, most Muslim use to describe people who are not Muslims. Wrong. Wrong. It's wrong. I say they are wrong. Okay, okay. All right. So we are on the same, uh, so far we have been going on the same ship. Right. I hope by the interview done we are still on the same ship. Right. Okay. All right. So, I want you to give the people of Jamaica a little synopsis of why is it that you are so recognized as terrible in Trinidad, not in the world, but in Trinidad. Why is it that... Why I am what? Why is it that you are seen as a terrible person and a person who tried to overthrow the government in Trinidad? Well, you see, they have the the people who inherited the the power from the colonial master, and they still think that I am a slave, but I am a free man, and if you try to enslave me, I will resist slavery because I am a free man, and I was I was very disappointed with. Um, your government. No, the government of Jamaica, not my government, the government of Jamaica. Okay. Yes. Because they said, they said that if I would be allowed into Jamaica, I would radicalize the Jamaican people. All right, hold on, hold on. So I, became, so I became a clear and present danger yeah. to the Minister of Na This is what the Minister uh, yeah. of National Security, your minister, said. No, no, that not. I would radicalize the Jamaican yeah, but, people. Yeah, but, but we, we don't reach a Jamaica, what the Jamaicans did. I'm trying to find out, was it, what is it that is in, what you did in um, Trinidad that caused all of these things? to appear on your record, I think. What is it that they say okay. you did in Trinidad? Now, I was a, a police officer for 10 years. Yes. Yes? Yes. From 17 till 27. And uh, I was at my um, home, and a policewoman came to me and told me that two senior cabinet ministers, the attorney general and the minister of national security, the advisor to the minister of national security, and also the one of the captains in the army, in the military army, was found. She was working at the airport in the narcotics section, and she went into the VIP room and saw them with a large amount of cocaine. This woman, police officer. She then um, tried to address the situation to the commissioner of police. He was afraid because his boss is the Minister of National Security. And she tried all how she can to address this matter until finally they transferred her from the airport where this cocaine reportedly came in. Sometime after that, she came to me and informed me about this situation with her mother and her husband and told me that the same people are going to kill her. I told her I don't believe that. They said, Mr. Abubakar, you're the only person who talk for African people, and we want you to know that this girl is afraid for her life. I said, well, I don't know what we can do. Nothing has happened. And you, uh, at this point, I could hardly do anything about that. You're talking about the ministers of government, the present ministers, national security, uh, attorney general, the advisor to the minister of national security, and a high-ranking military officer. There's nothing I could do. She said, they are going to kill me, Mr. Baka. I said, well, I, I know I cannot predict the future. So let us wait and see, you know, how this thing can pan out. Four days later... They created a mock battle, and they, in a bus, while she was in a bus with several other people in the bus, a young police officer took out his firearm and shot her in the head and killed her in the bus, full of other people. He comes and sits behind her, takes out this 9 millimeter and blow this young lady head off her body. And then 
I was I I was devastated. I I I, I do not know what to do. About three weeks, I could not sleep. And then my wife told me, you know, when I married you, you were a man who was fearless. And now you are afraid of these people because they are government ministers. And you see that a black woman is being murdered and you are afraid to challenge them? I said, okay. So on the Friday, we went to the public square and we had a meeting. And I explained to the population what had happened, that this woman had come to me and told me what has happened, and then all hell broke loose. We, they, they unleashed the state machinery on my good self and my organization. We could not pray on Fridays. They would disturb the prayer every Friday, mash up everything. We had a lot of outreach centers where we were talking to people, we were helping the community, we were working in the community. We, we, I was working at that time with an umbrella organization of UNESCO, so we brought a lot of medicines into the country, we brought doctors in the country, and we were doing outreach programs. At that time, we were trying to establish a relationship with the poor and the oppressed in the communities. And we became very successful because governments don't care about the poor and the oppressed. Not, not, not the governments that I know in the Caribbean. Finally, finally, after a lot of confrontation and confrontation, one morning the government sent the police and the army to occupy our headquarters. The army just came and they occupied the western side of our, uh, our, our, our headquarters and the police came and organized the, the eastern side of the organization and they put on a camp. Now, my brother Baruka, I have, I, I am a believer in education and we have a preschool a primary school, and a secondary school. I am the only man in Trinidad, my organization, that looks after the Jamaican children, the Guyanese children, the Grenadian children, the Vincentian children, because they come to Trinidad to etch out a living, to try to get a better living, and for their families, and their children are not allowed to go to school, to the public school, because they do not have right papers to settle. And that is that is madness in what we call CARICOM. That is not CARICOM. That cannot be CARICOM. How can CARICOM neighbors come to Trinidad to try to etch out a living and the children cannot go to school? So I have them in my schools send someone to Trinidad and you will see I have all these foreign in my school with no pay because these people are trying to etch out a living so I do not charge them for this education and for that the government of Trinidad and Tobago has never given me one single dime for my children to pay my teachers for those children not a dime have they given me but I manage with God's help I managed to keep this school going up to this very day and I have been we have been very, very successful in our schools in looking after the Guyanese, the Canadians, the Jamaicans, and the Vincentian children. Send somebody to God. Call somebody in Trinidad. Call a radio station and ask them, is this true or not? Call, and they will tell you that is true. For that, I have become public enemy. Now, back to this thing. After they occupied my headquarters... We went to the court, and I can send you those documents, and the court told them they had no right to occupy my headquarters, and they should leave. They refused. They refused to leave. Then they appealed the matter, and we went to the appeal court, Justice Crane, and then Justice Crane told them he gave them seven days to leave, seven days to leave this place because they were unlawfully occupying our headquarters. They did not leave. I went to the Chief Justice, who was a friend of mine. We were young together, and, and at that time we had a little party and thing together. I went to him and I told him, he said, the government must obey the rule of law. So be a contempt charge against them, or else that is anarchy. If a government do not obey the rule of law, that is anarchy. So we brought a contempt charge against the government. The government decided that charge will not be heard. So every time we go to court, the matter is put off. 
these police and the army, they began to disrespect our women and they disrespect our children. We made several complaints for about two years. That year, my children had the worst results because my children always star. Our children in our schools are always star in, in, in the education system. That year, we did very, very, very bad. Very bad because the army was was walking through the school. The the the, the police was walking through. The, they were disrespecting our women. We complained to the army officials. We complained to the police officials. All they did was change it and put a different crew. But the same attitude continued. My dear brother Baruka, I prepared myself to defend myself and my community. And I arrested the, the perpetrators of the murder of this woman. I arrested them. I went to the parliament and I arrested them. Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You said that you went to the parliament and arrested the persons which you alleged killed and was dealing in cocaine. These ministers. Yes, went, and who killed the girl who murdered the girl? Yes, I You did went that. to parliament yes. and arrest them. Yes. All right. We're going to we're going to come back. Don't hold on. I don't want you to leave that. The parliament. You're into parliament now. Where you're going to arrest right. some ministers of government. Click the button. We're talking to Yasin Abu Bakar, a former police officer who advocates justice for the poor and information for Muslim religious life in Trinidad. Mr. Bakar. Blessed? Yes. All right. But, 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 but get something straight here now. You yes. said you you and your group went down to the parliament to arrest who? Who did you go to arrest? The the the, the perpetrators of the murder of the young woman who were I told you the attorney general, the minister of national security, okay. the advisor to the minister and okay. national security, and opposite to the parliament is where the 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 army officer was stationed. So you went you went to arrest all of those people. Yes, but I, I, I should tell you that the, the week before, the one week before that, there was a, a plan, just like the one they planned at when they murdered the, 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 the sister. There was a plan to attack us the, 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 the Saturday on the weekend and to destroy our whole compound, which they eventually did after we were put in prison. So we found out by our intelligence, the, the same intelligence that we had, the same police that we had, they, they were coming to destroy the compound and that they were going to destroy us because they know we were going to, to put up a resistance. All right. So, so make this is you know, the week before. Yeah, all right. You said, no, you went to Parliament to arrest these people. What happened? They were, yes, and they were arrested. <laughs> you arrest them? Yes. So where are you carrying them? They, they pleaded guilty. No, because we had all the we had all the no, evidence. Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me get something cleared. We are them plead guilty in you, the parliament. You, 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 so you surround the parliament. Yeah, we, we occupy the parliament. Oh, you occupy the parliament, and then yes. you ask. You, 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 it's like you're trying them. You are putting them on trial. Yes. And then they said, the, what, they, what they said, what they admit to, what did they admit to? Well, the other members of the government said they never had any knowledge of that. But the people who committed the atrocities, they pleaded guilty, and they said, this does not have to end in, in bloodshed. We have a way out and a solution to this problem. Yes. So what was the solution? And then they, then they went and they got in their law books, they had um, Alexander Hem Hamilton was a great jurists from America and during the Civil War when the Civil War ended they wanted to give back to the South the crackers in the South who lost the Civil War mm -hmm. all the properties that they had seized by the North right. and then Alexander Hamilton the great jurist American Jewish, he made something called an amnesty, yes. where they would they would be freed from all the acts that they committed because they're now going to be the United States of America. Yes. So Alexander Hamilton, the great Jewish from America, he made an amnesty that gave a a, a waiver of prosecution amnesty, from amnesty, them. Amnesty. They they were got the amnesty. Yes. 
Oh, it's like the truth. Yes. It's yes. like the truth. The, and the Trinidad government had copied that and had that in their books. We did not know that. Yes, yes, yes. Right. So they said, look here, this thing can come to an end without any bloodshed. We will give you an amnesty. And then we, we want to know what you want now in return. Mm-hmm. We said in return, we want new election in 90 days. In 90 days, we wanted to have a new election. And we will appoint one of you, which we did to be the interim prime minister, Mr. Dukaran. We appointed, we appointed someone from the same government to be the interim prime minister until elections were held in 90 days. Yes. They agreed to that. Okay. So how did you end up now in jail, in prison? Well, they agreed to that, and then they made this broadcast because, well, you know, for about three or four days, shooting started. The military, the, or the entire military, the entire police came shooting at us. I was, I was in the television station because I was making the broadcast. I said the government has been overthrown and, and, and the, you know, what happened to the people and, you know, everything. It was uh, so for about four or five days we had this shooting back and forward and see against the army and the police and shooting until finally on the fourth day, they went to the president and the president signed the amnesty okay. saying that they will give us the amnesty and then the shooting stopped and they said we will be let out and we will go back to our place and then they will have elections in 90 days and that will resolve the conflict so we agreed to that and when we came up but they they broadcast to the BBC the amnesty and what it said they broadcast that to the British Broadcasting Corporation so when we came out of jail, they said there was no amnesty. And they took all the papers that we had about eight different documents. They took them away. One of the documents got away. And four days after that, my wife and she got, got the document. One of the documents that got away. Right? It's the next story how oh, that happened, but it, it, we got the document. So when we presented the document in court, they arrested us when we came out, put us in jail. And when we found four days later that there was the copy of this am- amnesty and signed by the president, then we went to court claiming this amnesty and kept us in jail for two years. Two years they kept us in jail until finally the matter went to the Privy Council in England and the Privy Council said that they, they were going to set us free and we were set free the next day after that. The Privy Council said there was an amnesty, they know it was broadcast to the BBC and they had a copy of the amnesty and the Privy Council set us free after the two years in prison. And that is how we became free again. Oh, so after two years you were set free without any charges laid on your No head. charges, no charges. No charges. No charges. All right. No oh. So, but during that time, yes. they destroyed everything that we had. Yes. They destroyed the, the garment factory, the boutique, the supermarket. Yes. They destroyed the library. They destroyed the. Wood, I saw wood, them. Wood, wood, I, I've been there and seen them. I've been there and seen them. I've been there and seen them. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. They destroy everything. All right. Let me ask you a question. This is just yeah. a by the way. Have you ever heard of Sam Sharp? Who? Sam Sharp. Have you ever heard of Sam Sharp? No, sir. No, All right, sir. Sam Sharp is one of Jamaica's national heroes. Okay. Okay. So I know, I, yeah, I know Marcus Garvey. No, no, well. no, no, no. Sam Sharp, Sam Sharp. I'm just oh, making a... Right, Sam Sharp, uh, yeah, Sam Sharp, yeah. yes. When, when, right. when the interview done, you can go and check him out. But, all right, we could get back to the interview, you know. All right, yeah. so now, you w- did, did Farrakhan invite you to come to Jamaica? No, sir. No. On, on my declaration ship, I said that I was going to visit my daughter. She is a, a doctor in Eastern Public Hospital. Yes. So I was, I, on Saturday, I was 73 years old. So my son told me, why don't you go and spend, you know, your birthday with your daughter? And I came with my son, who is an attorney at law. And my wife, the mother of my daughter, who is the doctor in Jamaica. When we, when we came off the plane, they said we will not. No, 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 wait, 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 I don't reach this yet, I don't reach this yet. 
All right. right. Why is it? Did you know that Farrakhan would be in Jamaica? At that time? Yes. No, I found out after. I found, as a I, found, I found out the same day that Farrakhan came in. All right, so you made arrangement to come to Jamaica before you heard that Farrakhan was coming to Jamaica? Yes. You see, Ross? Yes, yes. I and I was never invited by Farrakhan. You could look at his in, no, 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 I, no, 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 no. I'm listening to what you're saying. I'm not saying that. You made arrangement to come to Jamaica to visit your family before you heard about Farrakhan being in Jamaica. Yes, yes. My so, son, so, my big son gave me a surprise and bought the tickets okay. for my birthday. A so, birthday surprise party because Saturday was my birthday. I was 73 oh, years old. Okay, okay, okay. So, 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 it, uh, he, so he, made, he made the arrangements and everything. Yeah, so and then he says... Huh? So you wasn't coming here to give no speech on Farrakhan's platform? No, 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 no. When I was detained and I was downstairs in the holding bay, the minister, the 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 high commission from Trinidad who came to look after my affairs told me that she just saw Farrakhan coming in the airport as she was coming. I said yes. Yes, she said yes. That is when I knew that Farrakhan was in Jamaica and there was going to be anything in Jamaica because she told me, maybe that is why they are holding you. I said, that has nothing to do with me. On my declaration form, it shows that I'm visiting my daughter. Also, my son, who is the attorney and my wife, has visited my daughter before and uh, there was no problem, mm, right? Mm, mm. But it was the first thing that my son, who is the attorney and my wife, had visited my daughter before, and uh, there was no problem, mm, right? Mm, mm. But it was the first thing that I was coming to Jamaica. But you know that it's I because. Be, but, but you uh, know that one of the reasons why this happened is because Farrakhan was in Jamaica. No, I don't know that. That is not we, what we, I said. Minister of National Security. No, said. well, listen to me now. They say that. They don't want you to come here and go into, well, at the prison, them say, if you go give no speech to radicalize the people there. Yeah, that is, that what is the, the word you use, radicalize. The, the yeah. minister said that. I don't know. Were you, were you intending to go into any of the penal systems there? No, sir. I know, sir. There? Absolutely not. <laughs> absolutely not. <laughs> Uh, you can look at Farrakhan program. I'm sure you would have heard a no, program. No, Farrakhan, and you will no, think Farrakhan. No, where did, huh? Yeah, no, Farrakhan never have your part of the program. I just have to try to figure out the whole thing. Because we have been hearing a no. lot of different things. You know, we're trying to get to the top of this thing now. You say. No, no. You are no, saying no, 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 no. non-apologetically to the whole of the world right now is listening. That you did not know that Farrakhan would be here until you decide that you would come here. No, when I was in, I was, when I was detained in the holding bay, and the high commissioner of of Trinidad and Tobago came to see me, she told me that on her way in there, Farrakhan had landed in Jamaica for some anniversary thing on Sunday. So that's when you and know. Maybe, uh, that, that, that's when you know that Farrakhan would be here when he was in the holding bay. Yes, yes, my the, my high commissioner told me that. So where did they get this thing that you were coming here? Under the auspices of the nation of Islam to radicalize people. Where did they get that yeah. from? I don't know where they get that from. I don't know where they get that from. I have no idea where they get that from. But <laughs> I told you, on my declaration form shows that I was visiting my daughter and I was staying at her home, not even in a hotel. I would imagine for I can guess when they would be staying in a hotel, but I was staying at my daughter's home. It is on my declaration form. Yeah, I got the impression that Farrakhan invited you here and you was going to speak on the program on Sunday and you were going no. to say things that would inf how long how long was you how, how long did you intend to stay in Jamaica by the way? Four days, four days, four days, four days. That means that you'd have leave already. If they well, allow you, left, if, um, the Monday morning I was scheduled to left to leave Jamaica. We were just staying for four days because my birthday was on Saturday, and of course I would spend a day Sunday with with my daughter. My my daughter was making preparations for my birthday. Saturday was my birthday, and I would spend Sunday with her, and we would leave on Monday morning. You know, say so sometimes doping our run down people, and them get scared. This is a good example <laughs> of doping our run down nobody, and them get scared. 
So, but my dear brother Baruka, I wait, 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 wait. I, I should come to you. You were not pronounced persona non grata at any time by the Jamaican government. Before that, yeah, were you persona non grata by the Jamaican government? In other words, well, you understand what persona non grata mean? Were you a persona non grata person in Jamaica? Not no, in... no, I, I had never been to Jamaica before. You never been so to Jamaica I, I before? No, no, I'd never been to Jamaica before. I traveled to other Caribbean islands, and I, I, I was never sent back home. You have never been sent back home. You have never been sent back home in any other Caribbean island. No, and I traveled all over Africa. I was never sent home. I traveled all over the world. I was going to and from in England because my my two sons. You've were been to England? To to wait, 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 wait. You've been to England? He, yes, my two no, sons. No, but a man like you, you, wait, 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 a man like you, according to how we had he listened to each other, you're not supposed to enter England. Why you forget this England set me free? You forget <laughs> the privy the privy conference set me free, man. You catalyze the people there. You can't go to England. Oh, it's England set you free. Can you imagine that? Yeah, the Privy Council, remember? The, the Privy Queen, the we Queen went. set you free. The Queen set you free. Yes, yes. The and, Privy Council in England. And one of our colonies now said that they're not going to allow you here because you're going to radicalize yes, the people them. Yes, and put I man back in chain again like the slave ship. Put cuff on my man hand and put him on the slave ship again. Wow, wow. You know, say, Baruka, you, have you, a, you have a big task, you know, Baruka, brother. Eh? You have a big, you have a big, big task. <laughs> Baruka, I, I, I have eight Jamaicans who work with me. Yeah. They're hardworking, they're honest, and all they concern with is to take some money and send back to the family in Jamaica, right? And them not stupid. I cannot radicalize them. They're not stupid. So when the Jamaican government say that if I come and talk to the Jamaican people, I would radicalize them. They're insulting the Jamaican people because Jamaican people are not stupid. I am a stranger for the first time. I would come for four days in Jamaica and radicalize Jamaican people. That is how they think the government think about the Jamaican people, that they're so stupid, they're so gullible, that a total stranger could just come and radicalize them. Oh, Baruka, makes sense, man. Yeah. Makes sense, dear brother. Makes, you are an intelligent man. I see some of your video. You are an intelligent man. That don't make no sense, man. Yeah? Yes. All right. So you, you were being boisterous in going back. Why Why? Why you never just go back? To them never want to be first class. That is what you were saying. So no. You have a full problem. Listen, that, that is not a question you ask me. Yeah. If, if I ask you... Muta, when you will stop beating your wife? That's not a question. You already say you're beating your wife. And I just asking you when you will stop. So that's not a question you ask me about boisterous. I was not boisterous. I was never boisterous. I, I, I am a very calm person in my, in, Yeah, but in if, my Mr. B, if you wasn't boisterous, why them spend four million dollars to put you on a private jet? If you wasn't boisterous. Why them spend well, four million dollars to put you on a private jet? Them love you, man. They, they're, them not put they, they, right took, they took me to the plane, right? Yes. And we went to the back entrance. Yes. They told me to sit here in the back in the economy class, right? Yes. yes. And I have a surgery on my foot. When I went to the Maldives Island, I got deep vein thrombosis because it, it, it was, I went from here to London to Dubai to Maldives. And I didn't have a chance to, to stretch my foot on the, on the way to Maldives, so I got deep vein thrombosis. I spent five days in the hospital. I told them, I showed them the, the surgery on my foot. And that is why I came first class and have a return ticket first class. I told them, just put me up in the first class and I'm going to go home. They said, all right, they went forward, they talked to and fro, backward and forward, because they, I was accompanied by four people. The captain said that he cannot bump off five, four, five people off of the plane. If it's just myself, well, then there's just one man, right? But if it is, if it is five people, he can't bump them off. So wait, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, listen to me when I say no. You make me feel... Funny, you know why I make me feel funny? Because why? Me, me never hear this yet. Me never hear this. 
Maybe you me tell you something. Me believe what you say now. Me believe what you say. Trust me. Me believe what you say. You say well, see, that you have a yeah. bad foot. You have a foot where you just do surgery on. I show them that and they know that they agree with it. They yeah, agree yeah, they yeah. Put so, it so now the captain says that them can bump off some people off of the first class to put you there. So no, 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 no. The captain says if it's one person, it's okay. Yeah. But to bump off five because I was accompanied by five people, two members oh, of oh, the security, the security, the security them, the security and, and them, two, uh, two and two immigration people. Yes, so yes. that is four and myself five. So them can't bump off some of the people for put them there, and you? No, no, yeah. no. And I in first class. Remember, I in first class. So it's not because you was boys or us. Why the captain say you must come off of the plane? Uh, uh, my dear no, Baruka, uh, no, I, I complimented I complimented the 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 inspector of police who did the investigation, right? He was very polite and I want you to congratulate him for me. He was very good in his doing. And also a woman superintendent who came from five o'clock with me in the evening until three o'clock when I boarded the plane. They were very good people, along with all the other good people I meet, like Bob Marley say, you know, the good people that we meet along the way. They were very, very good people, so there was no need to be boisterous. It's just that when they had to go on the plane, they didn't know that they was going to put me in the back. I didn't know that. So they put this cuff on me to put me in the back seat of the plane. While I have a first class ticket, I say, well, I'm going home, but you ought to put me in the first class. I have a first class ticket. And I show them the injury in the foot. You could look at it and you will see that that is what happened. Then, one of the officials say, you can't take the man constitutional uh, right away from him. If you have a first class ticket, you have to send him back home first class. Because the captain say he's ready to leave because he has to pick up he has to pick up um, people who have connecting flights. And then, that is the problem. Then they took me off the plane, still in the cuff, and they put me in the holding bay, and everybody disappeared. So, so you got a four million dollar flight home. Well, I I don't know, Baruka. I don't know how much they pay for the flight. All I know is they put me on the flight with two Jamaican defense um, force people Minister, yeah, yeah. and two people from the immigration. So that is four and myself five, and I came home. So five of you plus the the crew was on that flight home for fa four million yes. dollar. Because well, you I say, don't know. I, because you I don't said, know how much it costs. Yeah, well, I'll tell you how much it costs. Four million dollars. Right. Because you yeah, have a bad is, foot and you have a first class ticket and you want to go back on yes. first class and them couldn't, the captain couldn't accommodate that. So you left now to them pay four million dollar taxpayers money to carry you over. Plenty money. I have plenty money. Wow. 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 Bridging. I tell you the truth. My dear man. brother Mabuta, I tell you the truth, man. I'm not lighter, brother. I tell you the truth, and that happened. If you ask the people, ask the official, they will tell you, yes, that is exactly what happened. Nothing more, nothing less. The minister, the minister of national security, Bunting, um, Minister Bunting, stand up in the parliament and told us at Total different story from what you say. Well, I heard what he said. I heard he said. They said you he were boisterous. I, I heard him say you that was creating I, problem. I was uh, yeah. They, them say you was creating problem. You was boisterous and also that they didn't want you to come here, come radicalize the youth them in four days. No, but the, the, you, 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 the you, them in Jamaica are not stupid. I'm a complete stranger. They don't know nothing about me. They know oh, Farrakhan. They know Farrakhan. They don't know you. I'm only by you that the first time hear about you. I the first well, time I, hear about you. Yeah. And me know about you because me the day of them time, I hear about that thing there. And me go, I, me go, I, me go to Trinidad and me see the whole of your little vibes with your place and Muslim vibes and all them things there. So, but I'm not nice to you. You mustn't come to Trinidad and then check your brethren, man. No, you will no, do that, well, man. You're no, welcome no, at no, my no. home, man. No, but no, me will come check you. No, yeah, me will anytime. come check you. <laughs> anytime. No. You're welcome anytime. So, me want to know if we meet. Look here, look here, huh? look here. I hope when me come, it's like how this is going all over the world now. I hope when me decide me come at Trinidad, you will hear them say, person and not grata. Well, it no matter if them send me back when a $4 million plate, why? Well, not? well, well, <laughs> me, no, me, I don't know. But I could tell you this, right? Yeah. Me, uh, I, huh? Where? 
Yeah, I could tell you this. She yeah. want me coming here? Yeah. Yes. All right. Let me tell you this, um, right? Yeah. Everybody in Trinidad know who I am. Yes. I don't stand nonsense, right? Yes. I, if you, if you look on the press conference that I came when I go back, I was defending Jamaica people because the Minister of National Security in Trinidad said that the Jamaican people are sucking the, the economy in Trinidad. He lied. Now, I told him that he lied because it is the Chinese that is sucking the economy. The Chinese have all the businesses, all the, 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 the they pick up the whole of Shallow Street. They, everywhere you go is a Chinese supermarket. Everywhere you go is a Chinese restaurant. And these Chinese are just as illegal as the Jamaicans who are in Trinidad, but this is CARICOM. The same thing I tell you. How you will have a Jamaica come from, um, a man come from Jamaica in Trinidad in CARICOM and the child can't go to school? So you have to come in my school. How you go to a child from Guyana, from St. Vincent, and they can't go to school because they don't have national papers? What the hell is that, Baruka? What, what kind of thing is that? And that's what they're calling CARICOM? Uh, come on, Baruka. So I speak out against that. I speak out against that. And you could look. Yes.